Demonic series. Uh, last week we discussed how the devil is involved with what? Music. music. We talked about how he's heavily involved with music. And all of y'all seem to have very much enjoy it. I was kind of afraid, like, how would you react to this series? Because you're probably thinking, this man's a lunatic. Just talking about everything is of the devil. Well, maybe not everything is of the devil, but a lot of things are being overtaken by the devil. But I'm going to start off with this message, uh, just how you heard it last week. Um, come with me to uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. We started off last message with, like this, and we're going to start off this week. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Do not conform, thank you, Jake, to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. No matter what you're in life, you are going to start something new. You're going to try something new, listen to something new. We're all hungry for new things. However, I am afraid, just like I said last week, that we are being more transformed by the ruining of our minds than the renewing of our minds. And one thing I believe, actually a bunch of things that I believe are ruining our minds nowadays because of the devil, is television. Tonight we're going to be talking about how the demonic is heavily involved in TV, and TV shows, and, and movies, all that good stuff. How many of us can say we can live without TV? Few of you, yeah? I do also have more comics than clothes, which is basically just TV. More comics and clothes, okay. Which is basically just TV on paper, so I feel like my opinion doesn't matter. Can you live without your favorite TV shows, your favorite TV series? See, that's when some people say, look, buddy, you're going a little too far with that. You can get rid of television, you can get rid of cable, but you're not getting rid of my streaming. All right. Um, but I personally believe, and from personal experience, this is rotting our brains, and it's just taking too much of our time, and I'm afraid we, we use it so much, and we watch it so much, and we give so much more time to it that it's starting to become an idol, something we're putting before God. Now, it would be okay to watch a lot of television had we put God first. But how many times can we say that nine times, or how many times out of ten can we say we put God before we watch TV? Put God first before we watch TV. No? Maybe? Maybe not? Six. Six? 60% of put God before TV. Oh, that's good. I like that. All right. Instead of me just talking about television... This is what I want to talk about tonight. Our first victim of the night, Mr. Tony, go back to the uh, slide, please. Our first victim of the night talking about television and how I feel like the demonic I, I is getting it. just, it's not hiding anymore. I've only seen a couple of episodes of Stranger Things, and I'm not bashing. I'm just, I'm just taking out what I have seen out of TV shows that might not be the best idea to put in a TV show. And here's just a couple of signs that I just looked at it and I said, oh, wait a minute. This is a little head turning. All right. Let's start off and just talk about how I feel that the demonic is heavily involved with this. First of all, it lives up to its name. It's actually a very strange show. You're gonna, you can get very confused and very lost if you don't understand what's going on. Now, I, for one, have not watched the series. I don't 100% know what it's about, but I'm basically covering what uh, I do know about it. First picture is of a man, I believe his name is Eddie Munson, if I'm not mistaken. Different guy. What's his name? I don't know, but Eddie Munson is a different character. Strange name. Okay, well, this man is part of a group that, in every TV show, they're the losers, the lowlifes, the rejects, uh, the geeks, so to speak. And they form this group where they all they do is hang out, laugh, and play, and play a game called, a board game called Dungeons and Dragons. Everybody's seen like a reality TV show where they're playing Dungeons and Dragons, all that stuff. Well, they formed a group, and they called themselves the Hell, Hellfire Club. Yeah. That, the name of the group is called the Hellfire Club. Okay, yeah. right? I've seen that I have just a long time. I'm just going to keep my yeah. mouth shut for this portion. 
Based off of research, they are named the Hellfire Club, which their their uh, T-shirt has a picture of a demonic-looking figure. I mean, come on. And just based off of that picture, he's holding up some devil horns. And you might not think that's nothing. It's probably not. It's just something that just makes you think just a little bit. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's just the shading of the TV. All right. And then next, you have these lovely looking creatures right here, where you might just think, oh, they're just, they're just, you know, Demogorgons. yeah, fake creatures, demogorgons and whatnot. It's, it's not the creatures that make it demonic. It's their purpose that I have found makes it demonic. If you look at it symbolically, these creatures feed off the mind. They feed off flesh. They make, they go after the the higher race of hum, of humans, and they try to overtake humans. Sounds a whole lot like something that I know about that's been mentioned in the Bible, trying to overtake humans, because humans are the reason why the message of God goes out to the world. So why wouldn't the devil go after humans, right? But what I wanted to focus on most is not the Demogorgon and these suckers right here. I just want to throw them in there just some give you a little heads up about Stranger Things, is this guy right here, I, anybody that's watched Stranger Things, I can't remember his name. Yeah, it starts with a D, what's that called? Vecna. Vecna. Vecna, I think it's Vecna. So he said, Vecna! So, Vecna here was actually a real person until he died, I think, I'm, I'm, I'm not mistaken, and he became this. And he's from, from the bottom left here, a place that's called I forgot what it's called already. The Upside Down. Just the name alone just strikes say, wait a minute, what you mean by the Upside Down? It is a land just like ours, however heavily hellfired, I guess you should say. It's everything, today, uh, but what the opposite of everything that it is today. It is a run-down, withering, dead state, which... My buddy Vecna here is trying to drag all humans there. It sounds an awful lot, lot like the devil, if I'm not mistaken. And just the details of Stranger Things is just like, it's not a very fun-loving, welcome you in, get something good out of it kind of show. Now, that's probably not a whole lot of evidence, but it's just something to make you think. It's not a, yeah. Yeah, the show that you were telling me about, you didn't tell me the name of? I have, like, two pictures of, like, just, like, a part of the episode that you can already tell that just, like, didn't, didn't, like, wait for us to comprehend. Oh, yeah. Is that a pumpkin? No, it's a, like, I'm just saying. What's your name? Dead end, the yeah, it's not um, like, yeah, the shows are pretty, they're pretty out there. <laughs> While you might not think this show that I'm showing you is demonic, you must look at the details. And I personally think this show is evil and has nothing good to show us. And if anything, just look up the show on YouTube if you never watched it. It's just something to make you think. But... This show alone, after season four, I think they're working on season five. It's right around the corner. They need to quit. Oh. They're on six. Quit? No, I said they need to quit. Oh, they need to quit. Oh, they oh are. just like the Fast and Furious TV show. Are they show. on season five or six? TV, they're on movie, whatever you call it. Or seven. It's all the lot. After season four, they've had five billion viewers. And I just don't see what's so great about this show that five billion people have to watch it. However... You might not think that's really, you know, head turning, but I want us to go to the next slide. This is the one I really think will make your head turn. Next slide, please. What is that? Little demon. Oh, that's the Naruto. I saw this and I said, "You've got to be kidding me," because normally, you know, a parent or a child will see an animated kind of show and think, "Yeah, I can watch that." By no means is this a kids show. If I'm not mistaken, Disney teamed up with Fox, or excuse me, FX, and decided let's drop one season of a TV show where 
a little girl whose dad is Satan. And uh, Satan meets a normal woman, has a child. Who is this girl right here? Yeah. And her father is Satan. So at the end of the day, they're going around and they're talking about things that are biblical, but they speak against it and they joke about it and they laugh about it. And everything about the show is demonic. And people loved it. They said, I don't see anything wrong with this. We're not mocking Christianity. We're not acknowledging the devil. Oh, however, you come from hell. You live in hell. Demons go all around trying to get involved with humans and overtake their brains and, you know, make them their identity. But it's not demonic whatsoever. Just come on. Yeah, and then I was talking to Julian earlier because I totally forgot to put this in the in the loop or the slide. There's actually a TV show called Lucifer. That show is fire though. But literally, it's fire. No, because it's the devil. Yeah, literally. But this show alone. One season three, episode four. Four, right? Watch it like four times already. This show only has one season before it got canceled, as it should. Um, <laughs> But has two over two hundred million viewers after one season. Oh. I just don't see what makes you look at that and say, "Yeah, I'm that watching this." That makes me look like that's yeah. not something I even want. Like yeah, I'm calling out of work to watch this, dude. No. But it's sad that I'm gonna share this with you. Uh, Disney was always meant to be a kid-friendly organization. That's Disney. They got Disney. Yeah, Disney teamed up with FX. It's more effects, but it got canceled yeah. over here. Uh, yeah. Disney was always meant to be a kid-friendly organization. Nothing about this show is kid-friendly. And I highly recommend you don't look up the uh slot the uh what you call it, previews of this. It's not good. But why would somebody show this to the kids? With a pew -pew in the, <laughs> the vulgar is very bad. The graphics are not good. And this is not me bashing a show, but it's just like somebody thought, yeah, let's show this to the world and confuse kids and make them think this is a kid's show. And you should have just seen the posts and the comments on Facebook, every Christian mom saying, this is unacceptable and I don't like this. All right. But here's another thing that I found demonic that a whole lot of people enjoy, and I enjoy it myself. But the more, you know, I'm not saying I'm holy by any means, but the holier I've gotten, I realize, wait a minute, this might not be a good idea. Uh, pull out that next slide for me, please. This one? Yeah, that one. Y'all recognize these guys? Y'all recognize them? I can't see. Y'all can't see that? Jason and Mike Myers. Yeah. Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers. Two most famous murder movies which is one is uh it's, it's called jason yeah and the other one is halloween which is an ongoing movie series that should end because you're running out of ideas but i know at some point you've recognized these guys horror movie lovers get thrilled when they see them too because they're the most famous and they say those are my favorite horror movie characters Yeah, Chucky's so funny. He's but so funny. what do you mean by that, though? He's so cute. I ask you that because I also have it written down. Because people oh. say, these are my favorite horror movie characters. Why are they your favorite? What makes them so good that you yeah, like? Because it's hilarious. He's hilarious. funny when he's killing them. Yeah. Like, the wife, the wife in the, uh, his wife, is like, don't step on the knife. It's so classy. Try something else. Yeah. He's talking about how to murder someone. Did you? That's the you, now you just turn off the funny stage off. Just, oh my god. <laughs> That's even worse than this one. <laughs> That's even. Uh, he's not demonic, he's just not. Mm. He's just a death. Death. But you mean to tell me that you support movies about grown men who go around killing everyone in their yeah, sight? So and people cheer that on? It's not, they say, it's not an endorsement. I used to be one of them, I confess, but I've actually heard interviews of people that watch movies like this, and they're grown men 
uh, just cheering on these guys saying, yeah, yeah, Jason, yeah, Jigsaw, yeah, Chucky, yeah, uh, my move, kill another person. Just, wow. <laughs> Grow men to go around and kill people, and they love it. You said what? I like it. The first one, not the second one. I don't know what they did on the second one, but oh, yeah. it was kind of fun. It was funny. Don't you think that that says more about them than the product? Because those, you can't get the reaction out of them without putting out the product. I'm just saying, look, if those if people sound like, them, like, like the same types of people that read the Bible and are asking Minorities, okay. Anyways. If you don't think this is demonic, all right. So we no, established. I think it's just demonic. We established people with support. You know, people going around and murdering, and it's not real. It's just a movie, right? These are just people faking it and just pretending to die, right? That's not demonic. Okay, we've established that's not demonic. Would you react differently if you knew this actually happens in real life? <laughs> Would you react differently and support death and people going around and killing people if you know people actually walk into schools and do the exact same thing? No. Well, he ain't walking You're missing the point. You're missing the point. People, millions of people go around supporting horror movies like this and people going around and killing each other, or just one person going around and killing everybody. But the same thing happens in schools. And that's when we stop laughing. Now we can explain it though. It's because the show is entertaining. We know it's fake. It's pretty entertaining people going around killing people. But we know it's fake. Sometimes it might look real. I feel like it's, a, I feel like it's one of those situations like if you don't want to do it, you are not gonna do it. Like something can't influence you unless it's like already in you. Like say somebody wants to get you to smoke something, you are not gonna do it unless you actually want to do it. Okay. Yeah, some people might say this is different because it's a movie, but we live in a generation that supports stuff like this when I just can't find nothing good out of it anymore. When there's actually people that walk around and kill everybody in their sight. It's outside of schools. It's not just schools. But there's people that go around shooting and killing children. I just don't see much of a difference when we support that as entertainment, something to, that you enjoy, and it actually happens in real life. Now, you can agree and disagree. This is a safe place. You watched this before? Yeah. I used to love watching this stuff. You watched Chucky before? I did. You watched it before? I <laughs> watched it. It in the front. That's funny because it's called it. Yeah. Watch what? <laughs> yes, I have. Yes. I see. I see your point, but this feels like make. I do agree that that watching is endorsing, but not that much. The reason why this is technically acceptable is because it's under the form of of the literature. This is a story about something. We bring stories in the in 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 the Bible where God genocides entire countries. I agree with you that it's demonic, but I don't think I think that it's a problem of discernment. I have that too. I'm glad you said that, actually, because while this alone is not actually necessarily bad, depending on how it, of, of its effect on you or anybody, respectfully speaking, anybody with mental disorders and feels like this is a good idea when it's really not, it's all discernment. Like, if you make this your favorite kind of things to watch, how does that affect your attitude? How does that affect your lifestyle? How does that affect your ongoing character development. Anyways, I just want to share that. I'm like, I'm not the biggest fan in the world of horror movies. Quite frankly, I don't want to say I hate them, but they're definitely at the bottom of my totem pole. They're not for you. They're not for me. They, horror movies and Grant my favorite, my favorite. do not get along. <laughs> Somebody I second that. All right. What about this? What about the next slide? Now we're talking. Now we're talking. You can't pay me all the money in the world to watch half of what's on this screen 
right now. Now, this is why I say this for last, because while Michael Myers and Jason and Chucky and all that, they're literally just about, you know, it's trying to scare you. It's trying to make you uncomfortable. That's what horror movies are supposed to do. And now obviously that's going to have killing people involved. But then when you start entertaining people getting influenced by the devil, such as The Exorcist, in every movie of The Conjuring, and this one specifically, because I watched this and it scared me half to death, The Devil Made Me Do It is the title. And people say, this is good stuff right here. You need to watch this. I ain't gonna lie. I watched them before, but my second time, it was just too boring for me. They didn't it was just too boring for me. They didn't scare me. Oh, so it's, it's, it's awful. It's terrible. I'm just like, no. Because I just can't entertain myself watching people get influenced by demons. And while demonic um, deliverance is a good thing, it seems like half the time the priest is the one that ends up getting hurt. <laughs> And nobody gets delivered. So it's unbiblical. It's not acknowledging anything good. It's not uplifting God. And this is why I put this up here. This is why I do this series. I'm not bashing horror movies. I'm not telling you to stop watching it. We need discernment because if you do not have the Holy Spirit, I'm getting to you in a minute, Toby. Uh, if you do not have the Holy Spirit, if you do not have that strong, firm foundation in God, this might steer you astray. They say, oh, so I can't watch this no more? Oh, if I become a Christian, it means I can't do this no more? Forget that. I'm not going to become a Christian. I, I'm not going to tell you what you can and cannot do. That's not my job. I can only keep up with myself at the time. But the sermon says, if you know this stuff is true, it might steer you in the wrong direction. But yes, Tobin, you had your hand up? You know what show that is? Why are you watching Has Been Hotel? How do you know what that is? I don't even know what that is. No, I do. What is your YouTube? I'm gonna talk to this father about that. Let's 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 move on. But this just movies. I'm just like I don't tell you not to watch, but I encourage you not to watch because I'd rather you watch true, real life demonic deliverance before you watch anything like this, because this stuff entertains the devil more than it actually pushes the devil away. Before it, it entertains more uplifting and acknowledging the devil than it is giving demonic defeat. This is why I, I want you to be f so full of the spirit that you can look at the, you could watch it, but not be influenced by it. Because you were saying, that's some scary stuff. It makes me uncomfortable when I watch it. Now, I'm not saying you specifically, but everybody watching this kind of stuff that does not have properly trained spiritual influence of the Lord, if that makes you uncomfortable and it just makes you all ugly inside, you know, that might be some kind of bad influence that horror movies should not be having on you. Because now if you're too afraid to close the door, if you're too afraid to go down the steps after turning off the lights, if you're too afraid to sleep in your own bed at night after watching this kind of stuff, this is exactly what the devil wants you to be afraid of. But at the end of the day, we say it's just a movie, but you got to think about its influence. Because I'm not saying this, uh, this is true, but how many people that turned into killers' favorite kind of movie were horror movies? Or pornography, either one. Because none of those things will complete you. All right? Yes, Tobin. We, we can talk. Can tell me later. We can, we can talk about that later. But before we go bashing any more horror movies, let me give you some scripture, and then we'll land this plane. You said what? No comedy movies. Nah, I didn't. No comedy movies tonight. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27 says, And do not give the devil a foothold. Why do I get put that scripture in there? It's because we entertain things that might not necessarily be, you know, under the devil or acknowledging the devil or anything like that. 
But you'd be amazed how the devil can take what you enjoy and use it for his glory because you're not acknowledging God. Like, it could be your music influence. It could be all the shows that you watch that's not giving God any time. The devil's trying to say, hey, don't you want to watch another episode? And after you watch two episodes, hey, don't you want to finish the season? And after you finish the season, you just realize you watched two seasons in one night and did not speak to God once. It's just simple stuff like that. Or you could go heavy, like I said, these movies about murders, and then that influences you to enjoy that kind of stuff. When at the end of the day, how big of a difference is it when there's people going around entertaining murder, when there's people getting murdered every day? Where does the, where does the line draw a difference? Okay? And submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil, he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. That was supposed to say sinners, not you sinner. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. I'm just, I did this series just to let you know how you got to be careful what you think and what you know, what you do not know the devil is involved with. Because I think the devil is heavily involved with horror movies. I think he's absolutely involved with the music industry. And while there's good artists out there, uh, who are not really saying about bad things, getting absolutely overpaid, I think the money can make you a horrible person. I think money can turn you, turn the sweetest person into your worst enemy. Taylor Swift is now the highest paid woman in the world. Did y'all see that? No. She's the highest paid woman, I almost said actress, uh, musician in the world now. Oh, and now we can't. I can't watch a, a, a simple NFL game where the Chiefs are playing where I don't see Taylor Swift. That's the because it's making NFL look better. It's all about money. I don't money. Know his name, but Travis Kelsey. Yeah, that's her boyfriend. Yeah, money's not evil alone, but the love for money is evil, and the devil is absolutely involved with that. It's just simple stuff like that. You just do the math. This plus this, and you realize, oh, the devil is actually involved with that. Not everything is of the devil. I'm not telling you that. But the more you give the devil a foothold, the more he can't get involved. That's what the scripture is trying to tell us. And the Bible is also saying resist it. He will flee from you. Which means you can be a Christian. I'm not saying you can be a Christian watch horror movies. But you can be a Christian and stand before this evil stuff and it doesn't have any influence on you. Because I sound like, I sound like the plumb devil with the, uh, the speaker through this mic. Um, but you can be a Christian and stand before things and they have no influence over you because you know you have the Holy Spirit protecting you. But I would like to continue this series if you really lets me to. But uh, um, we're going to end that there.